Thank you for joining. In this lesson, we will continue practicing controllers in Netcore 7. We will focus on the iAction result interface, how to use it, and the classes and the methods it provides for redirection. This is the updated table form from the previous lesson. I have added some required classes from the action result abstract class, such as redirect to action result, redirect to page result, redirect to route result, local redirect result, and redirect result. I want to mention again that this list is not exhaustive, and there are more classes available. In order to redirect a user to a new page, we mainly have two options – temporary and permanent redirection. The standard example of a temporary redirect is the use of a 302 status code. For instance, when a particular product, such as video cards, is sold out in an online shop, and according to marketing rules, instead of displaying that the GPU is unavailable, we can offer an alternative, better or cheaper product. When the originally requested product becomes available again, the temporary redirect is cancelled. Additional examples of temporary redirects include situations when a website is undergoing maintenance, among others. And a standard example of a 301 permanent redirect is when a product is discontinued. And to satisfy the customer, we provide a redirect to another product, such as an upgraded new version. In this case, when a search engine encounters a 301 status code, it understands that the resource was permanently moved to a new location. With a 301 redirect, even if a user's bookmark or previously saved link points to the old URL, their web browser will automatically redirect them to the new URL. This process occurs transparently, and the user will seamlessly reach the new location without encountering an error. Now let's examine the sequence diagram of of the requests and responses between the client and server. The first step involves the client initiating a request by visiting a URL. The browser then sends the request to the server. Upon receiving the request, the server processes the URL and responds to the browser. This response includes an updated URL and instructions related to the redirection process. The browser follows the instructions provided in the response and sends another request to the server, targeting the new URL. Finally, the server responds by providing the updated resource. In a nutshell, this summarizes the sequence of interactions between the client and server during the redirection process. Now let's write some code. I will create an endpoint named a gaming GPU. For the first example, we will use a redirect to action result class. We can hover over the class to view its provided properties. Alternatively, if we navigate to the class definition, we can see its internal structure more clearly. There are various constructors and properties available, and you can click on the three dots to obtain a description of each item. So I won't provide detailed commentary on these items. And for that URL, we want to be redirected to gaming GPU cell. To achieve this, we will need an additional controller. Following our regular pattern, we navigate to the controllers folder and select MVC controller empty. Let's name it redirect controller. Inside this controller, we define the gaming GPU sale endpoint with the sale method that returns content as the return method. Now we need to declare or return the redirect we want in the home controller. The gaming GPU endpoint must return an instance of redirect to action result to make it work. And as you may recall, there are various constructors available in the class definition. We will use the very first constructor with three parameters. The first parameter is action name, and the action name corresponds to the method's name of the endpoint where the redirect will be performed. In our case, it's the sale method. The second parameter is controller name, and the controller name is redirect controller. It's important to note that we need to provide the controller's name without the controller suffix. Based on these parameters, sale and redirect in Netcore 7, the framework will find the route and process the redirect to this route. As you recall from the theoretical diagram, a location header will be provided in the browser's response headers. And the third parameter is route values. And although we won't provide any specific values, it is a required parameter. Therefore, we use a placeholder object. In our case, this class defaults to providing a 302 temporary result, redirecting to the gaming GPU sale URL. Now, if we make a request to the gaming GPU URL, we will be redirected to the gaming GPU sale URL. Let's open the developer tools, and here we can observe our final redirect destination. To view the redirect process in the developer tools, we need to set a breakpoint in the code. 
If we place our breakpoint here and send the request again, the code execution will pause at this breakpoint. In the developer tools, if we click on gaming GPU, we see the gaming GPU request URL with a status code of 302, which is automatically provided by the server since it wasn't explicitly mentioned in our code. With a 302 status code, the server instructs the browser to make another request to the URL specified in the responses location header. Now, if you open the set location, you will see that the sale location has made a request to the redirect URL in accordance with our code. The response headers are still empty because we post the code with our breakpoint. If we step in, the server will provide the completed response. So once again, we sent a request to the URL, received a 302 status code, and got the location header in the response. Then we sent another request, and the server responded with a redirect URL containing the message from this URL. If you revisit the diagram of the request and response sequences in the theory section of this lesson that we discussed earlier, you will find that it exactly illustrates this behavior. So, we have made a successful request with a 302 status code. Using the same class instance redirect to action result, we can obtain a 301 redirect result. To achieve this, we can refer to the class definition and explore the available constructors. By utilizing the constructor with four parameters and setting the boolean value as the fourth parameter to true, which is false by default, we can obtain a 301 status code. I will send a request to the gaming GPU URL, and in DevTools for this call we will receive a 301 status code, indicating a permanent redirection. So we send a request to this URL, and the status code is 301 because the class parameter is set to true. The response header location from the server provides us with the information about the new address to navigate to. In this sale request, we have a pending request to the URL with the sale parameter because the execution was temporarily halted with the breakpoint. If I resume code execution in Visual Studio, then the response headers of the sale address will appear. Additionally, if I access the gaming GPU endpoint directly, there won't be any issues. The gaming GPU URL is accessible and provides a redirect to the URL with the sale parameter. Similarly, if we access the sale URL directly, we won't encounter any errors, and the URL is automatically updated with the sale parameter. As a good practice, you can also provide constructor parameters with their names to make your code more readable and understandable like this. Additionally, we can make use of the route values parameter. Let's declare it as a model 4090. In the redirect controller class, we can retrieve this parameter, store it in a variable, and then add it to the string return. Instead of using the redirect to action result class, we can also opt for the shortcut redirect to action method. The primary distinction is that the class constructor includes the fourth boolean argument, while the method doesn't. You can verify this in the definition and notice that the fourth argument is fragment, which may result in red squiggles and an error message indicating that the constructor overload doesn't have any parameter named permanent. To achieve a moved permanently redirection, we can use the method redirect to action permanent. Both of these methods, redirect to action and redirect to action permanent, return the redirect to action result type, with the key difference being in their parameters and names. Another class we should discuss is a local redirect result. With this class, we can only redirect to local addresses within our application. It cannot be used to redirect to external websites like Microsoft or GitHub. Using this class is straightforward. We simply provide the address we want to redirect to. The shortcut method is local redirect. Both the class and the method default to a status code of 302. If we want to change it to a 301 status code, we can use the permanent parameter with a value of true for the class and add the word permanent for the method. And the final class we will discuss is redirect result. This class is used when we need to redirect to a different domain than the one we are currently on. The usage pattern is exactly the same as the examples above. By default, it's a 302 status code, and if we need it to be of type 301, we add the permanent parameter. For the methods, there are no changes. 302 will be handled by redirect and 301 by redirect permanent.
To conclude, the lesson is recommended to use redirect to action result for several reasons. Firstly, all parameters are easily accessible, providing better control over the redirection process. Additionally, it offers various constructor overloads, which provide flexibility when creating objects of the class, making it a, a good choice for managing redirects in your application. And as always, lesson assignments. At the conclusion of each lesson, I highly encourage you to complete the assignments, as they will greatly contribute to your progress in ASP.NET Core 7. By consistently practicing, you will see faster results in your learning journey, and the assignments answers you can download from the GitHub. The link is below. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more great coding content. Stay updated with the latest videos by ringing the notification bell. Happy coding!